Um, right here. So, right here, find out that my name has it. My name has Um, if you want to do anything, you don't have to go to do by saying your name is you. I'm available after school Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday is a master plan at noon. So, um, you need to make plans to come in after school Monday and Tuesday from family to there so you can plan ahead next week. If you want to come in and ask about your grade, um, by Sunday night, I mean, Sunday night, your test or two tests should be in focus. Um, I took a couple of days of yesterday, and um, by the end of school today, your assignments will all be in there. Um, so after the end of school today, you should be ready to use the test or two tests, and then you'll be ready to come back. Anybody have any questions about their grades? So when I look at them here, the direction to your seat back here on side, there's a little, um, there's a little picture there. And what we want to do is we want to think about this reflection on our side facing. So um, I like to have a good understanding of what A, B, C are. A is 1, B is negative 8, and C is negative 8. And so there's a set of conditions that um, that help you figure out what numbers work in this problem. You need to find numbers that will multiply to the C value, in this case is negative 20, and add to the B value, in this case is negative 8. So I list everything that multiplies to C. I start with gray. Gray sounds like it's 20. And then I say 2, the number's even, then I divide by 2. 2 times 8 is 10. And then I have a three. I check in my calculator. I'm not sure which factor it is assigned to. For some way this factor makes just be what it says it is. 20 doesn't divide by 3 is 4. 20 divides by 4. But the app I asked all of this was quick. So 20 divided by 3 is not. This is it. This is the list of all of the things that multiply to negative 20. So then I have a list. Which one of those will combine to make 8? 2 and 10 make 8. 2 minus 10 equals negative 8. So those are the numbers that I'm going to work with. After that, it's just putting it in the correct form. So you need two sets of parentheses. You need your letters. There's an X. You put the X in the first spot. And then since we take the positive 2, we write plus 2. And since we take the negative 10, we write minus 10. This is called the intercept form. And that's where we're going to go. Does that move my mouth? Yeah. To be honest, I didn't do it. Two and three was more difficult. Um, so now I will make these into little mini equations and solve them. And I know that one answer here is negative two. That's an x-intercept if I want to graph it. And another answer is 10. Okay. Any questions? I want to remind you that you can always check this. Okay, right here, 10, three, zero. If I wanted to check it, I could FOIL it, and I would get what I started with. So. I would do x times x is x squared, x times negative 10 is negative 10, x times 2, combine in the middle, and I have recreated what I started from, okay, based on my assignments. So when I see this, sometimes I can just think, well, 2 and 10 make 20, 2 and 10 make 8. Any questions? All right. Number two, it's not working. Have you guys tried number two? No, thanks. It's like it's the main part. It's not.
but I do have a tip for you to help you with a grab on line number two. It goes that no matter what, ever, if you're asked a factor or a direction, say factor, you should all, everybody write this down. Always look for, what do you think? What do you think I'm going to say? Three or four A. It starts with a G. And then there's a C. Yeah, it's greatest common factor. Always look for a greatest common factor, a.k.a. Our good old friend, GCF. I don't know if you do those as much in middle school as we used to, but we used to do GCF all the day long in seventh grade. GCF, GCF, GCF. I don't know anything about the number 105, so I hope to see calculators out. I'm looking to see, is there a number that all of these divided by? I start with three. Six divided by three. Is five divided by three? Check it out. Does it? It's thirty-five. Okay. So this problem, anytime you can take a GCF out and do it, it makes your number smaller. Everything's easier. So GCF is kind of a little, a little gift to you. This time we're going to divide everything by three. What is it? It's 3x squared minus 6x minus 105. So I'm going to divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. And I'm left with x squared, yeah, 2x, yeah, and 35. Now I'm going to go back to number 1. I'm like number one, but I'm going to use these numbers here where a is one, b is negative two, and c is negative 35. So go ahead and go. So negative 35. Yeah. You know what? I, I always start with one. Does it divide by two because it's odd? Does it divide by three? Five times negative seven works. Rowan. Okay, you're talking about math. My bad. My bad. My bad. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. All right. So five minus seven is negative two. So it works. I'm happy about that. So I set up my two parentheses. <clears throat> it's a positive 5, so I write plus 5. It's a negative 7, so I write minus 7. And I'm not going to neglect or forget this little 3 from the beginning. I put the 3 in front. And this is my factored form. If I just figured that all out correctly, I did exactly what I did. So I'm going to go ahead and do the little baby equations and solve it. Yeah. What? Yes, but as um, heads up, number threes, I'm going to do that way more difficult. So go and come right back. I know it's your top priority to figure this out. Minus five, add seven. Here's our answers. Negative five and seven, two and three. 
one table gets three answers and then four answers. That'll be exciting. Three answers and four answers. For instance, if the problem was x to the third or x to the fourth, we'd have three and four answers. That'll be really great. All right, questions on number two. Number three, four three, 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 three. The other numbers have to make seven. So I will look and I will fill in these spots. So if I need a seven in the C spot, maybe I want to do um, one times seven. Well, the answer is a fraction, so that's pretty smart to get that. So maybe it's this one times seven makes seven. Or um, maybe it's seven and one. Or maybe this seven goes here and this one goes here and the seven goes here and the one goes here. It's coming to option answers. So I can foil them and, and try to figure it out. That's the guess and check answer. Or what about the seven and the six? The seven and six are like the most I like the process better. It's going to seem like a really long process, but after you do it a few times, you'll lose to it much more quickly than the first time. All right, the process um, was A does not equal Y means Y is equal to Y plus Y plus X times C less than. So A is 6, B is 17, C is 27. Um, I start with multiplying A times B, so 6 times 7 is 42. In my table, instead of looking for numbers that multiply to 7, I look for numbers that multiply to 42. So I'm going to use 17 that will multiply to 42, and I'm still trying to So I do 1, 22, and I know 22 is even, so it must be on this page, so it's 3 and 21. 42 is below my 6, so it has to go back up to 3. 3 times 14 
to rewrite the problem. With the numbers I just picked. And I'm going to put them in the middle. So the problem is 6x squared plus 17x plus 7. I'm going to rewrite it with the 3 and the 14. I'm going to go 6x squared plus 3x, plus 14x, plus 7. This is the same exact problem, but I'm using numbers that I already know are going to be helpful. If I combine the middle, I get this. So there's a 17 here, just like there's a 17 here. Okay. The reason we do this is because when a problem has four terms in it, it's better. It's better to work with. One, two, three, four, instead of in three. Um, so now that I have four terms, I'm going to group them. This is called factor by grouping. And I'm going to look at just two at a time. I'm going to cover up the last two, and I'm just going to GCF these. So what's the greatest common factor with this one, three? What do they both have on there? Three. And you know what? These will also both have an X in them, so you can GCF three X. So what does it look like if I divide by three X here? What's left? Um... 2x, I took 1x out, so just 2x, and then 3x over 3x is just 1. I leave a 1 right there. Okay, um, and then I'm going to do it again. I'll, I'll cover up the first two. And I'm going to um, GCF the 14 and the 7. What's the GCF of 14 and 7? 7, so I write the 7 out front. And that makes 2x plus 1. Something really magical will happen. The parentheses will match. I'm going to write it because it has to happen. Oh, let me finish this. So the parentheses match. We're one step away of having our, our factor. So um, the whole purpose of factoring is to split that square up. So what I did is I took one of these x's and I put it in front and I left one behind. And if I were to distribute it back in, it would still be 6x squared. So you're splitting the x squared up. All right, your very last step is to put the 3x and the 7 together. And you keep one of the matching set. And that's your function. Um, you solve it. So you do your little baby equations. 3x plus 7 is 0. 2x plus 1 is 0. And the reason this is so complicated is because we have fraction answers. Yeah. And so, um, like Rowan, you said 3.5. Like some people can figure the fraction out early on. And they don't have to do all this. So if, if if and there's a whole method in that. So if you can figure out the fraction early on, that's a that's a whole thing too. You're allowed to figure this out anyway, your brain. 
your brain can. Um, so two fraction answers is what made this problem um, impossible to do with number one. Number one was because it was integers. Number three doesn't because it's fractions and yet. Now, 20 years ago, this process did not exist. And now, how about you, 20 years ago, all we knew was the guess and check. Everybody had to do the guess and check method. This is it. And now we have a, a process to help everyone who doesn't like guessing and checking. The process keeps going, but after you've done it several times, it goes more quickly. Well, when I just did integers. And I had to hang out for this part. But, so was, was there... Was this right? Wait, why do we multiply two Wasn't quite right. We have to switch the one and the seven here, and then we had it. Yeah. Now, so there's two other options here. We could switch this one and seven and this one and seven. So we were just one switch away from getting it by guessing. Right, a lot of people have questions about 42 since there was no C value. Um, on 40, the answer is just 4. You don't have to write it twice. Let me know what questions you have about this. Everybody get out your magnifying glass. Thank you. 
Numbers in the middle of the original. It's so cool. In the middle of the original. So I'm going to keep the 7x squared the same. I'm not going to write 29. I'm going to write 1x and 28x and then I keep the 4. This is where it's at. What you want is a problem with 4 terms. And factor by grouping is easy to see, I thought. 
seven and one and don't have a ten and one and don't have a ten and one. But there is an X in both of them. So you can always pull an X out of the first two. This one has X squared and this one has X. So for the first two, I'm going to take just an X away. And that will leave seven X plus one. Well, actually, the whole part, just the back end of splitting up the x squared. We're trying to break that up. So I'm taking one of its x's and I'm putting it in the front. It's distributive property, but reverse. And I'm leaving one inside. So I've taken an x away from both of these. And you can always think backwards to check it. If you use distributive property, you get just what you started with. When I picked the X um, for these two, I was ignoring these. I just see what they have in common. Oh, but you don't have anything in common. Yeah. And then when I look at the common thing for these two, I ignore these ones. I just find what they have in common. So you put a one or an X. Twenty percent of y'all are in front of that line again. You can see people are trying to work in there right now. You guys are cleaning the breath and voice out. Three, three, two, four. Are you serious? And now, since the parentheses match, what did you say? <laughs> no, nobody's laughing. You just got to fill out with the same language. Parentheses match that. What? Okay. Oh, man, man. All right, parentheses work match. So this is X plus 4. And, um, and then I think, so this is the part people will not know how to do on Monday. The X and the 4 go together. And then I keep one of the 7X plus 1. And then my left bracket is going to get filled by going in the negative sign. This is why I have my dog here. If you think you have a family family, you are missing this X perfectly. Is that what? Yes. And that's the reason for this big long process is that we end up with a fraction. If you did this whole process and it didn't get a fraction, then you're out and you put it on a split or Oh, let's do that. X is negative 4. And X is negative 1 over 7. Wait, what? Yeah. Negative 1. And now we have to find our sets for our set all of our numbers. I set these numbers equal to 0. Does that make sense? Thank you. 